Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, what I would like to speak about. It's a, a, a huge code which called Hygiene Plus Plus, and this is one of the most oldest and most common used uh, uh, Monte Carlo generator for higher generating uh, particle events in high energy heavy and college, right? Uh, this is a very huge task, so you see many institutes are involved. This is generally about the 10,000 lines uh, code, which was originally written in Fortran in, uh, in, in 1986 or something like this. And uh, the project, what uh, somehow was the aim of the formation of the GP, being a GPU laboratory, is to develop something with this kind of calculations. And this is what I, I would like to present here. So I would like to give a brief motivation for this uh, the, the physics topic, what I'm uh, working on, then a the couple of technical details, and some very new physics results just from the previous week. So a motivation. So if you want to see a material, uh, the properties of one materials, then, then, then you can have, uh, especially in hot uh, weather like this, a cold beer. But uh, in physics it's not always enough, so you have to choose a specific thing. You can make this one and then you can make a, a kind of approximation that is very close to the another <laughs> trivial <laughs> material, which is the water. <laughs> And uh, if you would like to see that how, uh, what are the properties of this material, then you know very nice, very well that uh, it has some phases like the ice, the, the water, and the water vapor, which is well known, and we can explore this in everyday life. But how about if these things moving a little bit forward to see that uh, at, uh, what, what happens with the same material at extreme condition? And this is exactly what is happening. So as you see, this, this red box is represents what I shown previously. So that was the ordinary spaces of the, of the water. But there are several others just numbered with these Roman numbers. And uh, this led us to explore several things like geysers uh, in, in uh, volcanic areas, or even the, the very, very about 2,000 meters that ice on the, on the uh, polar fields or or in high mountains, which has very specific, very liquid uh, phases of the water. So, okay, but what we would like to explore is nothing else, just the early stages of the universe. And the question is, the ordinary ma matter, which really builds up us, and we are really consist of the so-called baryonic matter, like protons, neutrons, and this kind of particles, so how they look like in the very beginning of the universe. If you would know that, we can make an exploration. So the first three minutes of, of shortly after the Big Bang is really represents the first atomic nuclei. And then the rest of the 37 million years is how it developed. So we are interested in these phases and uh, especially the, uh, the part which called quark gluon plasma. And for this one, we have to build an accelerator and we have to uh, see the, uh, the collision of nuclei, and uh, my work is related to this uh, LHC Alice experiment. So, Alice, the name is a large ion collider experiment because it's colliding large ions at very high energies. So, here you see this, this is very close to your place, you know very well, so it was only somewhere here, but this is uh, Geneva, and uh, uh, this is the, the La Plumon, the, the Gen Lake of Geneva. And this one is a 27 kilometer ring. So if you want to see tiny things, you have a huge, you have to have a huge microscope. Microscope, and uh, this is one of the huge microscope of the of the uh, large uh, large hadron collider, which can collide uh, protons and neutrons up to tera electron volt energies, which is which is pretty high. And uh, this device can measure the tiny properties. In proton, pro proton collision, it looks like this. is two proton I collides, and you have about 10 to, to 100 events, uh, which means uh, charged particles appear. And in the magnetic uh, field, it provide, they, they make this uh, curve uh, tracks. And in case of heavy ions, which usually lead lead in the case of LHC, if you call like two, let's say, ten times larger radius system, then you will have millions of tracks, and you have to uh, collect all the events, all the tracks of this one. And this is why we have a very strong uh, data acquisition group here, which develops uh, a very fast devices up to 4.7 terabits per second bandwidth 
to explore and get all the data from this one. So what we are looking for is the so-called quark soup or quark gluon plasma, which was in the very early phase of the universe, about uh, microseconds from the Big Bang, and this is what we are looking for. Uh, the results, which provides by this nice experiment, you, uh, we call it here. So these are the all plots which, which are measured. So even to, me to calculate this, it takes a lot of time, especially if you are going to more and more detailed theory. So if you have more accurate measurements, you have to go to more detailed calculations. And this is exactly how it looks like in a first order approximation, how it looks if two protons are collide. So we have to deal with this description, which is rather difficult, so you cannot imagine that how many uh, uh, computational efforts in this. If you can't not imagine this, you have to uh, move the shades and look that this is this building is next to us, it's about 7,000 cores, and calculating this partially, because the other 7,000 is at CERN. But all of them are single CP. And the problem is that we want more, because the particle physicists always wants more and always wants higher energy. They always have this, you know, this, this, this card cards in the, in, in the childhood when you always have the higher and higher speed cards and you have to put or more cylinders or whatever. So the next, we are planning to have the next level of accelerator, which will be an 80 kilometer uh, circumference uh, uh, particle accelerator with about 100 tera electron volt energy. And uh, if you see, uh, the LHC will work until 2035 uh, with a higher luminosity. And higher luminosity means that more statistics, more statistics, statistics means more data. So we have to somehow recalculate this in a theoretical way. And on the top of that, we have to simulate all the events what we, are, we will generate on uh, the non-existing uh, experimental frameworks. One side we have the Moore's law, which is very nice. Uh, and uh, I will say a few words about this, but we are generating uh, many, many data, about 15 uh, or 20 petabyte per year. So up to this point, we have about 80 petabyte, which is stored partially here and partially everywhere in the world in the so-called VLC G grid. And uh, so this is somehow the largest amount of data mm -hmm. of, the, of the, the, the planet Earth, I would say. And uh, this is this all raw data. So banks used to say that if you, are, if you would make a, uh, so they used to use the word big data, which means that big data contains the, the basic data, the raw data is about one uh, terabyte, it's on a disk, and then they make a convolution and there are uh, many, many, mm, uh, data mining and they have a huge database. The pure data what we have is about this high level. So we have to have very professional and very high uh, speed calculations to achieve this. So there's another issue. So uh, as I told, if I'm running the particle accelerator, which means one event takes maybe about uh, 10, 100 times longer if you want to calculate. So this means that we have to be much more faster uh, in terms of calculation than, than, than the real event. Uh, on this figure, you can see that uh, uh, two, two axes, one is the event size, so when you make a collision, then what is the size of the event in megabytes, and on the other side, you can see the rate, the, the, the frequency of the, of the events, and this, this is what will be increased, and this is what will be increased. This is increased by the high luminosity of the first coming particle accelerator, then this is uh, will be this will be increased because of you have higher and higher accuracy de detectors. The big experiment uh, which are dedicated to particle physics, uh, they are answering yes no questions. That do we have Higgs boson? The answer is yes we have. It's very easy because they are not very easy, but they are <laughs> calculating proton proton co co collisions and then measuring the properties on this, which was about as I said 10 10 10 hundred uh, tracks. In heavy ion collisions, which is my field, we have to store all the million tracks of the particles, which is rather not on, so this was particle physics, and this is heavy ion physics, where however you have a little bit lower frequency, but you have much more higher size of the events. And it's not only hard to recalculate this, but you have to have a huge memory and many, many things. And here is the point. So once we have a good old Moore, who was a very clever guy because he never said anything about the performance, but he said about the number of transistors, that it's easy to go because you can double every year. 
just you know adding the new core next to the previous one. So so he, he has always the right and as in my opinion maybe it's a remark to Suleiman that that uh, I think the companies follow the rules law and not the, the not the opposite way. Okay, and the other thing that we have the unders law, which gives you the, the how can you make a speed up with the parallelization, which is a kind of shitty thing that if you really want to uh, use, uh, if you really have a code with a very high parallelizable uh, portion, that it still doesn't make very strong sense. So you have to be uh, very much uh, knowledge. You have to have very much knowledge on the uh, on the architecture. You have to use different techniques to do this. That this is what is generally the aim of Forza. So let's see what we are doing. Okay, so the hygiene, uh, it's got the name from this one, which, uh, it's, which is a Chinese sign about the Bagua, which is eight symbols forming the word, uh, the wind, the fire, and so on. And this is also connected the, to the adjunct representation of the SUC color symmetry group, which is generally the strongly interacting map, the symmetry group of the strongly interacting matter. Also, the Alice detector from the size of the pipe where the particles are moving looks like an eight-folded thing, so this is also connected to that one. But inside, it's a big mess because it contains 20 years of physics and everybody figured out the new thing, they, the, the original authors just added it in Fortran, and it's very nice. Later, they started to develop a little bit more and they wanted to make it more and more uh, faster. So they asked some guys who were very experts on, on Fortran coding and they did some parts uh, to that way that it wouldn't be human readable anymore, but more faster. <laughs> So, but we are very lucky because I have the student Gabor Viro and the student uh, Sylvester Baron, also Gabor Pop and uh, Miklos Vilashi, who are the big wizards of this field. And uh, actually, Miklos was one of the father of the original code, so we can still ask him about how to make this. And if we are putting together all of this, we can have the new version, which is a rewritten version in C. So historically, this thing started in, in, in very late, and, and I think I'm very happy that we have some of the, we have many many young colleagues here. But uh, just think about where you were born, okay? So I'm on this historical list. <laughs> so everything started in 1978 when they made the jet set, which uh, described the particles. When you have the collision, you have partons, which are quarks and gluons, and later they form the uh, hadrons which are the uh, surrounding materials. And to describe this, they brought this jet set. And uh, finally, at a certain point, they started to call, including many, many other physics, they called PTR, which is, you know, a, a fortune teller uh, of, of, uh, from the uh, Greek history. And they developed everything in Fortran until 2006, when they, they freeze the, uh, the thing, and they decided to move everything to C++. And in two, it was a parallel thing, so they started to develop the C++ version close to the, uh, around the millennium, and they finished them around 2007, and that was the point when they finished uh, the support of the fourth one. And uh, in case of PDA, it's a huge development since the very early ages, so it's about uh, 30 years of physics, which uh, were coded inside. But the main problem of the hygiene, which is based on the PTR code, is that it throws it somewhere here, and inside the hygiene code, we are still using the physics which is inside, which is sucks. So it's, it's really a problem that we have 30 years of more development physics on the microscopic level of, of uh, interactions, but uh, we have to use this because it's, very, it's, a, it's a huge task. But we were, okay, so how, how the, uh, uh, the program is working in general, so this is a particle Monte Carlo generator, so it has, makes it to many, many, using many, many several and variable uh, uh, numbers and uh, using the param physical parameters combining in a particle collisions and it's using the PTO code, uh, building up the quark antiquark parts and putting some soft physics inside and then making the elastic collisions which are not described uh, just in non perturbative ways and putting everything to the Ariadne and you know Ariadne is the, the girl who is getting all together all the strings what you have from quarks and gluons and making a string fragmentation and finally producing hadrons. So this is generally how the code is working. And in Fortran, it looks like in this very nice way. And it's really a hard thing because 
this part, uh, this part is the PTL part, this part is the nuclear, high energy nuclear effects part, and of course, not all of the interconnection is plotted here because otherwise you, otherwise you wouldn't see even the boxes. It's a real sequential code. So the, uh, and on the top of that, you know, Fortran has this very nice feature, the so-called common block, which is a thing that you are fixing a part of the memory forever. And uh, if it's forever, then it's forever together, so you cannot do anything with that part, and it's very hard to implement in C++. So, so one of the things, one of the most hardest part was to use this. But of course, we didn't want to rewrite everything, but we wanted to use the highest, the, the, the latest version of physics, and we wanted to use this in, in the way that if they would develop the PT or the source code of this one, it would be still uh, changed in the new version of code. So we use the PTL, and uh, on the top of the PTL we develop the hygiene part, which, uh, so the PTL generating the parton parton interactions when quarks and gluons are colliding, and they put the, uh, the nuclear effects when you're forming the uh, nuclei and they are colliding and they have jet quenching shadow winds, whatever, and uh, all of this communicating with the user. This was the first version, which happened. Uh, we, we, we made the, the full uh, rewrite of the code about one and a half year, and then uh, we had a working version, which uh, gave almost the same result. I will tell you why uh, not the same. And then uh, we turned to a second phase to make it real C++. Because when you are transforming subroutines to functions, it's just uh, uh, vocabulary from one to another, but later you have to add, so you want to add some more semantics, and if you are pro uh, more professional C++, at the end it, the code will be real C++. What is the aim, of, and, and this is how it looks like now, even just recently we developed the, the hygiene core and the hygiene uh, manager, which will put together the events and makes a very nice version, and it's really more uh, parallel than it was. And I can say this, and I'm very proud of this, that you know, Monte Carlo is typically not that case but you can uh, achieve a lot speed up if you make it parallel. But this course is very complicated, and uh, this code is very complicated, and, and with these new introductions and with the, this second revision, uh, re rewriting the uh, second time the original code, we could achieve a lot. So now I can show you some, some uh, performance numbers at the end. So here you see the program structure. So uh, in PTLA, the uh, people from the Lund University defined many, many things since the early beginning. So we followed up the, the, the usual naming what they have on this thing. Uh, so all the function names are look similar, or not similar, are, are the same uh, within the hygiene class. This was the first we did. Then we uh, used the common box and transfer to class variables, and then we tried to reduce the number of uh, uh, calling functions from here and there and whatever. And the other thing is to kill the go-tos and the other such a funny things that stops and breaks and whatever, which all kills the, the speed up. So the main program which can where you can set up the things it looks like here in Fortran and the other side in C++. So uh, I do not know how many of you know Fortran, but it's very much the same even for a physicist. It can really turn from one to another, and it's very important because all the 10,000 people around this planet Earth who are using such a code or this code uh, can easily understand and change from one to another. Okay, the other thing what we invented, but we do not want to uh, use the old uh, subroutines and libraries which somebody ever developed and they state that oh, I'm, I have the, the most best random generator ever. Uh, since then we have better random generators, we have many, many uh, libraries which supports faster and better computation and uh, on the top of that we are uh, comp compatible with the, the new or later version of compilers. So we, we are using uh, the standard C++ uh, 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 template libraries, we are using the boost, you are using the new standard libraries, we are using the PDI8 and this is a new function which contains the physics uh, which is also implemented instead of the old one. Okay, so he, how it, uh, it's an analysis looks like, just for the curios curiosity, so here you can define what kind of uh, function or, or distribution you would like to get out. 
fine events, so on, and then you can define uh, what kind of particles you want to uh, collide together, and then uh, just make a, a simple histogram from it. Okay, so the rest, uh, I think, so let me show some first test results. So this is one of the most interesting part. So, ah, oh, here is a mistake. This is AA. Okay, so in proton-proton and proton-nucleus collisions, uh, it's very, it takes a lot of time for the initialization, even for one event. It's about 35 seconds, and then it's coming the, the event generation time. And in AA collision, it's a little bit uh, longer because of the you have two nuclei and you have to carry out, uh, you have to count up where are your nuclei inside and where are the quarks and gluons inside. So it's a little bit longer time. If you can make a vectorization or tabulated version of this one, it makes a little bit faster. But uh, just for the comparison, so combining a PP event, so proton proton collision in a PTA8, so PTA8 <coughs> capable to measure this one. It's uh, 0.01 seconds. In the Fortran version of the, so the original Hanjin plus plus version is 0.2, and the new C plus plus and single core is 0.008, which is really a big uh, change. So it's generally twice as faster uh, as the PTR because this really using the MPI technology as and we really. Uh, program on that way that it can be capable later, not yet now, to use on uh, even on GPU or something like that. But that takes time. In PA, you can see the big jump. So, as I told, the proton proton is the simplest case for the collisions in physics, and it's about 10 times higher in proton nucleus, it, and it's about 1000 times higher if you have a uh, nucleus nucleus collisions because you have multiple reactions inside. And this is exactly, so there's no other code to calculate this one, but if you compare this, the Fortran version, to the new C++ version, it's really a hundred times, uh, an order of hundred times speed up on this one. So, this was a good thing to do this. In physics wise, we have differences. So the data points which are provided by the particle accelerator, this is uh, the Rick, uh, in relativistic heavy I call it at uh, Brookhaven. So the dots are from there. These are 200 GeV proton proton collisions. And you see the old version here with uh, this uh, green and the new version with this red, and they differ, but very close to each other. And on the other side, we have also a, a different data, and the old with this uh, with this uh, orange, and the modern one is the new one. So in some cases, it's better. Uh, from my point of view, of course, it's better, but they differ. However, the code should be the same. So the question: what what is what was changed? And uh, if you see the LHC data, uh, the data were theory, this is just only our code. You, you, you see that uh, within the data over theory level at different energies, there are differences, but this 50, 50 percentage uh, deviation is very natural in our case. So uh, it's, it's almost enough if you reach the level of the order of magnitude. So these are very preliminary results uh, from the forthcoming 13 TV proton-proton data by the Alice experiment. And here you see the dots, black dots are our calculations, which are very much on. Of course, this is log to log plot, but uh, on the data over power level, it's about 50% difference except on the size. Here we did some comparison to the different models. So we used the all the new version of the hygiene and the PTR, and this is also agrees. Uh, very well at proton proton level, and we also put the the uh, experimental data, and this is also very nice. I'm very good at it. Okay, uh, we just uh, published uh, the comparison to to other models, and it seems it's it's really very nice. But the main aim that now we have uh, a version which is which is fully C plus plus, which is much more user friendly, and I don't need to spend years to teach my students to Fortran to touch the code, but immediately can pick up you guys and, and <laughs> teach for this one. Uh, another thing that uh, the new part contains new physics. So the, uh, the, the, new, the original uh, PDA8, which were coded, uh, which were used as a basis for the hydrogen plus plus, uh, it contains new physics. So now we have to uh, rethink on the earlier physical parameters, and this is why the 
uh, even the new and old version of the hygiene is different. So probably, uh, of course, we are on the development phase. Uh, probably it's not the question of physics, but uh, no, it's not the question of the, the coding differences, but the, the, the physics. And we have some more variables, but uh, let me just summarize. So we have done the, this development, so changing from Fortran to C++, and we have the first physics results, and uh, the next point is one to give something to play for the experimental guys, because they want to implement this to an already uh, established framework uh, to the detector development, and then we try to move to the fully parallelization of this code, which now is on C++ basics, uh, which is much more uh, probable than the fourth Trump was. Okay, thank you very much. So many questions to the speaker. Yes. Mm -hmm. the question, I'm sorry to correct you, but you saw the, the timing for a single column for the multi-color, they were the same. Yes, uh, because we don't lose anything. Uh, okay, because we divided the the initialization time first, which which really depends if you have one event, you know, a multi core and a single core that differs, uh, and at this level, with this standard computer, I use the coherence three, which is uh, and on the it's scaling very nicely. It's I I do not have very long, so this up to ten thousand events at the moment, but it's up to this. <clears throat> Any more questions? If not, then I would like to just ask one very short question. The precursor of this talk was uh, last year by Sylvester Malandozo, who did much of the preliminary work on yeah. transforming the Fortune code to C, and it was very enlightening. That talk, practically, physicists start coding, nothing good ever comes from it. But, uh, <laughs> He uncovered a lot of mistakes in the fortune code, which uh, uh, which make it that that's why the C++ and fortune versions differ. But uh, a lot of but naturally coding mistakes are made when porting one language to the other. Do you know any rough data on the ratio of how many problems have been fixed? And I have no list. Uh, let's say it's it's about an order of of uh, fifty. I would say, but uh, the final physical results it doesn't have so it does not have so much impact. But there are uh, other points, physics-wise, which uh, should be uh, extended, implemented, whatever. Which now we are working on, and that really makes changes in the code. But that was not existed in the previous one, and it's a new new thing. So, for example, the scale dependent shadowing, the, the, the two jet quenching, and these things are, are will be in this because this code can handle this. Okay, so let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.